CP. Megan, I think you're going to start the nav -est, I think, again, on the Rob nav. Yep. Zero. Zero tether reps. Zero six eight. Audio slate, audio slate for dive H1910 at 20.0300 mark. See. Have all your sensors on. You. Get any data? Should uh, yeah, this might be a Aaron question because I don't usually run this. Um, yeah, stop all, stop all now, vest, and then, all right, and then there you go. I think. DVO, yep. Yeah. No, we're getting we're not getting any DVO or USBL from the on the Rav nav. But Yeah, so it's a it's a nav S problem. <laughs>
shows it. Is there a weird thing with like Navest having to be started before before the sensors come online? Because usually it is running before we spark up everything. So I know I know Navest is it's uh, it's funky. We have. Sensors? Yeah, we're... we're holding it. Okay. All right. All right, so I need blue lights on. I just need craft valve. I'm gonna do do a salute. No, <laughs> just move it. Okay. Four K. Two K. It's going. It's getting worse. Ah, I'm just moving it. Oh, it's no good. Stowing it. So it likes to be upright. So it's. But, uh, yeah. Are you holding? Depth? No, I just, I don't know. I'm getting pretty low below you, below you though.
So what do you think? It's the routing of the cable, the short or something? Pinching? Is that what you said? It's twitching? No, it's the wrist. Yeah, it's jumpy. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I know, I'm like looking at it, like, I'm not touching anything. <laughs> Give us a sec. <laughs> but if I go back out, are we going to get one, one ohm? Seawater? Go slow. Okay. All right, that's full shoulder. Or it's not full shoulder, I gotta readjust. Dropped a bit. Probably. Elbow, elbow down. Okay. I'll bring the shoulder up, yeah, and then I'll bring shoulder up, and then I'll go. All right. Now it's to bender.
Hello, Nautilus Live viewers, and welcome back. We are descending along the western edge of Kingman Reef, hoping to get between 1,400 and roughly 200 meters today. So a little bit shallower than we normally go, but we think we're going to see some interesting things and hopefully collect some important specimens um, of rock, especially. So we'll do a quick introduction. My name is Jamie, and I'm the comms lead. Hello out there, Emil Petruncio, watch lead. Coralie Rodriguez, I'm in the science seat. Uh, this is Leilani Safan, sitting as your data logger. Right. In the front row, this is Megan Putz, your navigator. And uh, in the hurt seat is Robert Waters. Uh, Argus seat, Jake Bonney. Video is Dave Robertson. Thank you, everybody. Um, so we have some questions about what's going on with the with the craft arm. Bob, would you want to explain that to our viewers? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, best for you. That depends on who's asking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give the elevator ride version. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're seeing a uh, ground fault on the craft. We had to do some work on it to uh, Fix the shoulder ram, and the new ram seems to be having a ground fault issue. So we service the connector and put a sleeve over it to try and remedy that. And testing it in salt water on a deck seemed to have proven that it was okay there, but we are seeing a ground returning. We're kind of hoping that maybe it gets squeezed out as we go down, and that's, that's the plan. Some complex vehicles we're operating with, so it's a, you know, we take it for granted when everything is going smoothly, but it really is amazing uh, that we're able to do what we do out here. So, our OV team's been uh, pulling off uh, some amazing feats over the past week. Absolutely. Yeah, the grounds are like 90% of our problems, always, because, you know, Seawater under pressure wants to go places that it shouldn't be, and electricity loves to conduct through seawater, so keeping the two separate is always a big issue. Roger. So, Emil, do you want to tell us a little bit about the reef and how close we're getting and what we're looking for? Right, so um, we don't have a good uh, collection of um, polymetallic crusts, uh, ferromanganese crusts, at depth shallower than 1,000. Is that right, Corley? Yes, that is correct. S s so this is a shallower dive. We'll be starting at 1,400 meters and progressing up. Uh, a slope on the northwest side of Kingman Reef, and uh, this site was selected because of, uh, well, uh, sort of a notch uh, in the canyon, in, in the, uh, on the slope that uh, feeds into some that. smaller canyons, <laughs> submarine canyons, and so those are frequently interesting uh, places for we'll just uh, shut it off biology, for because canyons tend to focus currents, Check especially it, if there are internal meters. waves generated by the tide, they tend to get focused in currents. And uh, so the filter feeders love those strong currents. And plus, the, with steep walls, there's a good hard substrate, probably not sediment covered. So uh, I'm looking forward to a very interesting dive. Uh, I've always wanted to do a shallow dive at Kingman. So here we go, finally. Megan, I can imagine you have some things in mind to see. I want to see some sponges and corals. <laughs> Since our dive here is going to be shallower than our last few, uh, we're expected to see higher density deep sea coral communities. So that should be pretty exciting. Maybe some more fish. Definitely some more fish. Yeah. More variety of fish. Maybe we'll, uh, I'll, I'll bring in power and you can And as we get it. shallower, <laughs> we'll maybe see some uh, really interesting diversity. Power. You gotta wait till you get comms. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, we could, we, uh, time permitting, you know, uh, we may get shallower than 200 meters. We have some waypoints that progress in closer to the reef. It just depends on the uh, prevailing weather conditions and how safe the uh, bridge watch feels about our, our proximity to the reef. But on the uh, northwest side, that's a good side because the winds would tend to blow us away from the reef if there was some engineering issue. Want to hit the crap valve for me? Yeah, blue, blue, yep. yep. Okay, there you go. Okay. All right, stoke. Can we, <laughs> so I can see somebody's nav here, so I know where I'm at. And we're at 500 meters and descending. Oh. Yeah. So I mentioned. Oh on no, I'm, I'm pointed up. I sorry, I haven't. I mentioned on a previous watch uh, that as part of the pristine seas expedition sponsored by National Geographic, Enrique Sala had. Did some shallow, you know, scuba diving in this yeah, uh, area of Kingman That's Reef, and just found it to lights. be a very pristine yeah, no lights. Lights, and healthy lights, ecosystem. Lights. And a large number of sharks. So I hear we saw five white tips on the recovery. On the last recovery, uh, not today, but. Yesterday's dive. There's been quite a few white tips out here throughout this entire cruise. Okay, I'm going to turn off your crap power. And while we were at Palmyra, I saw some, uh, we're pretty sure they are false killer whales. Aren't they? Mm. A type of dolphin with a blunt nose, blunt beak. We think they might have been melon headed whales. Melon headed? Yeah. Jordan was telling us that they're pretty well known around that area, ah. and they were, when they were around the ship, their heads were sticking out very clearly, so we were able to get a really good oh, idea great. on them. I'll so. have to look them up. Yeah. Is that another type of dolphin, perhaps? Or it's a uh, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they are, they Melon are dolphins. Are dolphins. <laughs> Why do they call them whales? Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's like <laughs> calling them killer whales. They're not whales, they're dolphins. Right. I think... Technically, all dolphins are kind of whales, in a way. Little miniature whales. Cetaceans. <laughs> well, yeah, they're cetaceans. They're all yeah. cetaceans. <laughs> they're in the dolphinity family, so technically dolphins. And then, like, technically whales would be things like baleen whales. Mm -hmm. But that, it, it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of confusing sometimes. <laughs> yeah, maintain. We're getting a lot of questions about the boobies. Um, we have not had them uh, since leaving the near shore of Palmyra Atoll, so we haven't seen any recently. Um, it was quite an adventure. <laughs> That's the word for it. <laughs> but uh, it seems that for the time being, we are bird free. To put a sort of spin on that whole in incident, <laughs> The fish that they left us on the decks, that's, you know, they're, there's a lot of, they're very healthy. <laughs> they're, these birds are not starving out here. <laughs> no, Palmyra Atoll is definitely one of the biggest nesting colonies of these red footed yeah. boobies um, in the um, world. I hear you. And I think at one point the other night, Evie Nautilus might have been the second biggest nesting colony. Roger that. Yeah, so these the, the boobies would be an indicator species. You? Healthy population Data. of them, healthy population of fish. All right, uh, Doppler's off. And there's trickles down. Roger that. Yeah.
You would think restarting it would make it all better. Sounds like we need a software person. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Jamie, I th there was a conversation on another channel. You said it's the largest population? I th one of the largest nesting uh -huh. sites. Right. I think there's upwards of 6,000 pairs on the atoll. I have to double check wow. that number, but that's a lot. So we're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So we're backing up to there? Okay. Yep, the Nature Conservancy is estimating 6,250 pairs on the atoll. And if you weren't sure, the Nature Conservancy co-manages the atoll along with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, so it's a very protected place, very hard to get to, which makes it perfect for conservation. And Kingman Reef, which we're exploring today, is also rather remote and difficult to get to. Um, known as one of the most pristine coral reef atoll ecosystems in the entire Pacific. It's about 932 miles southwest of Hawaii. And the clear waters and vibrant corals of the area support a spectacular diversity of algae, fish, marine mammals, sea turtles, migratory birds, and everything else we hope to see today. I had turned it on. I just now turned it on. So, Corley, you'd expect maybe some different um, uh, growth rates of the thickness of the crust at, at shallower depths? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure uh, how they will be different, but um, I'm thinking the hope is that sorry, another conversation on a different channel. Um, uh, but the hope is that we will find crusts that are more enriched um, in some of the elements of interest. Because uh, as you go higher in the water column, the oxygen will be lower. Right. Theoretically. But yeah, for every dive, I'm always looking at the oxygen sensor, seeing what it's doing. Yeah, I seem to remember an oxygen minimum zone somewhere around 700 meters or so. Yeah, let's uh, see. It looks like... We're probably still descending through it. We're just about 700 meters now. Yeah, so we'll have to wait and see. It does look like there was like a minimum and then it kind of went up, but now it's going back down and maybe back up again. But it looks like there was a, yeah, hard minimum, about 10 micromoles per liter around i think that's around two when herc was almost at 300 meters depth oh huh. it's kind of shallow yeah i remember seeing over at baker island in 2019 i remember seeing two minimums 
Oh, wow. A couple of water masses, I think. Oh, okay. Play. That's interesting. Yeah, I was, I had not Surprising. Thought. But yeah, so if I have some samples from this uh, general region already, and um, the the lowest oxygen I have is about like 40 to 45 micromoles per liter. So we'll see how low we can get. Mm -hmm. that oxygen minimum zone will occur beneath the euphotic zone uh, where photosynthesis is taking place and the, what's raining down is consumed and so the respiration I think by those uh, Organisms. grazers yeah, yeah. are uh, using up oxygen. Mm -hmm. We have a question from a first grade classroom in California asking why there aren't bigger animals that show up in our videos. And I think the simple answer to that is most of them stay away from our video cameras. <laughs> yeah, once in a while we get lucky. We s saw a whale in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we see some sharks once in a while. I, s I remember some uh, fun uh, sea lions that were swimming through bait balls, group balls of little fish that the sea lions were eating off of uh, Southern California. But, uh, and that was at about 400 meters, 1,200 feet. But uh, yeah, down deep here we're, and oh, and sometimes we'll get lucky and see a big octopus. Uh, mm. Sierra toothed octopus in, off of Baker Island. But, but normally, yep, smaller fish beautiful corals and sponges. I also suppose it depends on what your definition of big is. Mm -hmm. So to us, we might see a coral and think that's rather large, but if you're comparing it to a sperm whale, well, it's not going to look large. We Some of these corals are 30 feet long. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's the minivan sponge, Ooh. named such <laughs> that it's, it was the size of a minivan. So it was larger <laughs> than the ROV. It was wow. crazy. So there's some big stuff down there. Another question that I definitely want to address is what happens after interns are done their internship? Um, and actually a lot of interns end up becoming OET crew and team members. Yeah. Uh, Samantha, uh, I was talking to her this morning. She said she started as an SCF and then started in comms and is now a navigator. Well, she's actually also the Crane OET uh, coordinator. Oh, yeah. Operations coordinator? Yeah. yeah. Good crane operator. The crane. Yeah. OETs. <laughs> <laughs> OET is a pretty small operation for employees wise so a lot of us have to do a lot of different tasks so I'm facilities manager I'm the ROV engineer I'm the shipping receiving clerk the heavy equipment <laughs> operator the ROV pilot <laughs> official comedy relief <laughs> And Emil, we have a message from Dr. Ballard here that he trained the first false killer whale in 1965 um, right. on Oahu. So oh. maybe we can direct some more false killer whale questions his way. <laughs> 65. I remember Dr. Ballard mentioning that the pilot whales uh, were all, not all that smart, oh. not very trainable. <laughs> or maybe they were just too smart to be trained. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, what do we have there? Oh. A 
But as we were transiting to the Galapagos from the Panama Canal, we had a beautiful little pod of uh, pilot whales come up from behind Nautilus and split in two groups, swim past us on either side. It was a beautiful sight. Oh, I would have loved to see that. Oh, there's a little bubble. But that might be my first melon-headed whale, then, if that's what we were looking at. And uh, those f images you were showing, me, they, they, yeah, that looked like a good match. I wonder if anyone got any photos from deck. I just happened to look out the portal of my cabin and saw them about three or four of them just bobbing by. Yeah, I don't know if a lot of people went to get photos just because of the no. uh, the state of the yeah. deck yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Decks were off limits. Yeah. All right, Jake, you ready? We're going to try it again. run it again and see if it's uh, affected operationally wise. You ready for a valve? Uh, or no? Wait, it's uh, is it up? Blue button, then, then craft valve. All right, blue button, on yeah. craft valve. Yeah, okay. ready. And you got comms? You're all good? Uh, yep, valid comes. Got it. Okay, ready? Yep. There you go. that it's not affecting it operationally. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good. Is the bender and stuff still off? It's, no, it's on. If we didn't have the bender on, you wouldn't get a ground fault. Oh, yeah, true. So how things looking with the arm? Uh, it's still operating okay. <laughs> no funny business. Uh, the ground hasn't gone away, but it's stable. Yeah. So I think if we just leave it off until we have to use it, then right. How uh, how deft is Mongo? <laughs> Not very deft. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good that we're shallower. <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that should help. with that. Yeah. 
Yep. Oh, yeah. We can I can give it a I can give it a whirl. So we are still experiencing a uh, a current towards the from the south this morning. Yeah, it looks like the current's heading a little bit south. From the south or to to the south? It's pushing us south. Okay, at this depth, yeah. But at the surface, I think maybe. Yeah, the surface it was coming from the east. For those of you with questions about our internship program, you can go to nautiluslive.org, and if you go to join, then you can find our science and engineering internship program page, which lays out all the different types of internships, how they work, when, where, why, and importantly, how you can apply. Um, so we should have open application program uh, period sometime this summer, so you have plenty of time to look into it, but hopefully a lot of your questions can be answered on this page. And we encourage you to apply no matter what your specific background is. Go for it. Could you zoom out on uh, HIPAC just a bit? Yeah. Just want to see where waypoint two is. Uh, uh, keep going. Wow. OK. Well, that's yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, Herc could lead the way up the slope, so that's that's a good setup. But yeah, it is pretty steep there. Yeah, so our light, our white lines are five uh, meters apart during this dive, <coughs> and our black lines are twenty-five meters. Looks like 650 meters between waypoints. Yeah, 300 meter depth change over 650 meter along track distance. That's steep. <laughs> it means it'll probably be pretty interesting yeah. in terms of biology. But uh, we want to land in sort of a flattish area with the ROV. So we're going to see if we can set up to land right where we have our waypoint one, which Roger. looks like it might be a little bit more favorable. Yeah. And I'm, I'm finished with that zoom out, so if you want to. All right. So where do we have folks joining us for this blue water portion of the dive? These are the true dedicated Nautilus fans. Well, I know we have some fans from California tuning in. Um, where is everyone listening from today? Can you put it in the chat? I think you might be able to see that. Yep.
Uh, I, did, I quit. Yeah. I yeah, putting it in chat's a, a better mm -hmm. indicator. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the blue water portion. It looks like we have a lot of people tuning in from all over the globe. I think every single continent is accounted for, with the exception of Antarctica. That Amazing. would be a feat. Wonderful. We've got the U.S., Canada, U.K., Germany, South Africa, Norway, Brazil, New Zealand. Just wow, so everywhere. happy to see all of you. Australia, yeah. I haven't checked the uh, the web page lately. Do we have any highlights from our previous dives up yet? Yes, we did recently just post a highlight video that features four very interesting invertebrate encounters that we had on our first dive. So you can check that out on nautiluslive.org or through our YouTube channel. Oh, thank you everyone for sending in your locations. I love seeing the diversity in this. And hello to all of the school children watching. Welcome. Looking better. Wow. Got Germany, Indonesia, <laughs> Kentucky, Wisconsin, Ohio, Kansas, New Zealand, Montana. East Coast, West Coast. Ah, there's a Maryland. Hi, Maryland. Emil, someone's giving you a shout out from Washington. Tectonic <laughs> Turtle Watch member, all right. <laughs> Finland, Germany, Wyoming. Oh my gosh, the list goes on. Vancouver, Tennessee, France. I'm going to go out on the line and say that Kim Weaver, uh, SCF during NA-134, is tuned in the tectonic turtles. <laughs> Oh, there's a nice uh, Safana for and oh. Argus view. So we've got Herc on the channel one, Argus channel two, and the control van on three. Yes, we do. And if you want to watch all at once, you can tune into our quad view. I think it is off. And uh, on, right? On. Okay. So we've been challenged by weather uh, on this cruise. There were strong trade winds in the northern part of the Kingman Palmyra exclusive economic zone. So we're hoping to get up north uh, this coming week. It looks like there's a nice weather window Tuesday through Thursday. So we'll gradually be pushing north here. Uh, we've been confined to the southern part. Uh, and even then, initially, we were, it was kind of borderline conditions. But they've improved noticeably. Um, Feeling good about this weather window next week. Nice conditions here today. A little bit of roll, but um, some swell. But the winds are down, and that's important.
So we'd like to get to some of those northern seamounts because uh, the, the geological samples will be very uh, important for helping to un untangle the uh, formation mechanisms for these seamounts in the line islands in this area. There could have been multiple hot spots contributing to the seamount chain that makes up the line islands. So a very long hot spot chain. We good? Isn't that <laughs> nice? <All right. laughs> huh. Score. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> yeah, that's about as flat as it's going to get, I think. Yeah, this looks like the, the best spot to land, so we're going for it. We've got about 200 meters left. We seeing uh, it? Oh, what's that? A little, is that a little shrimp? Not bottom. We have some questions about siphonophores. Are they colonial organisms, and do they sting the way jellyfish are known to do? Yes, <laughs> to both of those. Um, they are a colonial organism that has differentiated individuals, so each individual has its own job. Um, jobs include things like being a swimming bell, or being a feeding um, zoid, or being a reproductive uh, part of the colony. So each individual differentiate to do their job and then they work together as a colony. And they do have stinging abilities. So you definitely don't want one to touch you. If you do see one washed up on shore, it's best to leave it alone, even if it is dead, because they can still sting you after death. Before, after your death or their death? Their, their death. <laughs> Hopefully, you're still alive. <laughs> I mean, technically, yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> I've heard of uh, so the man of war stings, you know, cre uh, leading to anaphylactic shock. Yeah, um, it's best not to be stung. Um, it's not pleasant from personal experience. <laughs> yeah. When did you get stung? Oh, while I was surfing. Oh. How long ago was that? Uh, a while. I haven't been surfing since I've been on the boat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. But yeah, usually um, you'll get those little blue um, men of war that sometimes people call them or bluebells coming in with the uh, trade winds. And so if you're surfing on Oahu, you might see them washed up ashore. That's a good indicator. You might run into them in the water as well. A good precaution to take is to wear a uh, wetsuit or leggings or rash guard or all of those things. Um, because they can't sting you through your protective gear. So it's always best to, to wear your protective gear. It also keeps the sun off you, so win, win, win. <laughs> and you stay warm, also a good thing. I've heard just nylons is enough to keep them from stinging you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't take much. Not that people swim their nylons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if you were going to wear something, you might as well wear something that's sun protective. <laughs> that way you can stay out longer without getting sunburned or having to reapply your sunscreen. So here's a question about giant clams. Um, any chance we're going to see some of them? Um, not where we're landing now, but if we do get very shallow, we could see some. 
but I believe we will have heat problems with the ROV by, by the time we get shallow enough to see giant clams. So very unlikely. There are some really beautiful giant clams within the region, especially closer to Palmyra that I know of, that there's some gorgeous photography of online. We did post uh, one on our social media not that long ago, but it is fascinating to look at. And to answer your question about how to get into this communication seat, the best way for you to get a chance here is to apply for our Science Communication Fellowship. And you can find more information about that on our website. Come on, stop, Jake. Why don't we come on, stop there? All right. Uh, come on, stop. We're on the steepness here. Yeah. Yeah, this is the flattest area I've got for you. Okay. All right, I'll stop. So something's amiss here. My altitude's not changing. It's because um. you're... Because I'm... DVL. Is your DVL? Uh, it was turned on. So we have. Did we you have try refreshing the page? Oh, it just did it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, this, huh. You just talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, yeah my job. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, wanted attention. That's it. Yeah. Huh. That's all it needs sometimes. I see bottom. There we go. Yeah. So it looks like I'm somewhat facing the slope. Yeah, that's good. Too far. Kind of rocky. Go ahead, Data Lab. Yep. Uh, can we turn off DVL? I guess. You guys aren't helping me out a lot here. <laughs> We just reached the bottom. Yeah. Uh, DVL is off. Yes, yeah, so you'll have no altitude, right? Yeah. I'm just eyeing. Right. Okay. You want to do the arm business? Sharp camera action. Comes. All 
got comms. Blue button. Blue button. Ready for valve. Valve coming out. Lasers off when you get a chance. Gonna come more out in front? Way out there if you can. Yeah, you need to go out someday. Uh, yeah, that's probably good. Okay, zoom in, Dave. I think the pan and tell is creeping a bit. Yeah. Seems to be. It's all right. Okay, uh, Zeus is going to black. Balance complete. Thank you very much. So you're not interested in anything from this depth yet? Or like um, Elba. Elba. Wait till 1,000 meters? Blue yeah, we off. can, Power but off. we don't really know what we're going to see. Maybe we could collect one rock here just to... Oh. <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> Standing by. <laughs> so are we collecting a rock? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's see uh, if... Uh, are there any loose ones around that oh have God. a good crust? Like this one, maybe? Uh, that's kind of on the wall. I'd yeah. rather get on the slopey part instead okay. of the wall -y part. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty steep little knoll. Yeah. Is that a crinoid? Mm -hmm. It is a crinoid. Yeah, there's a number of stock crinoids on this ridge that we're looking at, and uh, I saw bathopathies, so a black coral. Want to zoom in, Dave? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Several of them. Something purple any, on the bottom. Yeah, that looks like uh, Victor Gorgia. It's a type of octocoral. And it's pretty noticeable because of its bright purple color. Okay. Yeah. Can we get a zoom on that? On Victor? The, yeah. Yep. Purple, right? Sounds like a movie center. star. <laughs> <laughs> Victor Gorgia <laughs> Alba. <laughs> In the branches, you can see a snake star. Snake stars in the, are in the family Uriality. We often see them entwined in the branches of octocorals. Looks pretty healthy. Yeah. Well, I love that color. Yeah, it's a nice color. I think that's the Pantone color of the year, 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Heading issues here? Me? Oh, no, I just moved no. a little bit. No. Me, not oh. you. You. I may need to do the uh, octans. S octans. Balance there. Yeah. yeah. Nice zoom. Very cool. OK. 
Okay. And those little uh, things swimming around are amphipods. Amphipod. If you saw those. Yeah. What did they do? Um, they they use the coral as a habitat, so they'll hang out with the coral and um, just live their little amphipod lives. <laughs> I think we also found some amphipods in um, one of the sponges we collected. Oh, absolutely. Amphipods love to live in sponges. Let's see what else we got on this rock. This feature. Uh, I don't see anything loose in this area. No. No, no we could just. It's work nice our and way pillowy, up. though. Yeah, it is. Maybe we can find a little bud somewhere that will let go. Did you do the Octane? No, I was waiting for you to oh, be oh, done zooming. Go ahead. All right, so just switch it TCM2 and back? Yeah. In the Argus view, it All looks right. like there's something ahead of Herc poking up. Maybe a coral. A few things over there. Yeah. What's this? Oh. That's a cup coral. Cup coral. Good eyes. Good eyes. Can it come up a little bit? Yep. So that looks very similar to the one we collected on one of our previous dives. Yeah. Oh, yes. Probably in the family Caryophyllidae, maybe Javania. I'm going to zoom in there, Dave. So oh, it has yeah. this long kind of stalk. And then this, let's see, might be, it's either a primnoid or a bamboo coral. As we get closer, we can take a better look at the polyps. The polyps on the coral will tell you a little bit more about what family this coral is in. So primnoa corals have a have plates along the body of their polyps, and bamboo corals have segments in their skeleton. So I'm not seeing any segments here, and the polyps look a little bit rough and scaly. So this is a primnoa coral. It's unbranched. Yeah, we're zoomed in. Oh, that's it. All so this might in. be Candidella gigantea. Pretty small. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, gig the gigantia part refers to the polyps, so the polyps are pretty large. <laughs> okay. Um, and they occur in worlds of three most of the time. So if you're looking um, at the polyps along the axis, so that main part of the skeleton, and they look like they're occurring three in a grouping. Like so that? yeah, just like that. So we call that a whorl because it goes around. I see. Wow, very cool. Nice shot. And that is what I saw in the Argus view. Yep. And a little amphipod again. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, we good? Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Moving on. What is the uh, direction to waypoint two? East? Southeast? Oh. Oh, let me zoom out. Come on. What is that oh, swimming in the water? A worm? That yeah, worm? it's a polychaete. Polychaete. It might be something like swimmer. <sighs> it's a good name, not making it up. <laughs> <laughs> Very creative. There's also a polychaete called Flota. Oh, a, there's uh, something there with a sponge. long, yeah, yeah very yeah, long that stalk. looks like a sacocalyx. So a type of glass sponge in the family Euplectelidae. Long stalk. Yeah. Go ahead, Data Lab. Zoom on that, Dave. Okay.
very nice. Yeah. These guys? Yes. Oh. Are you uh, feeling any current, Herc? Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's a nice close up. Corley, we have someone asking about the rocks and whether they are from a lava flow. Yeah, so originally they are from a lava flow, but then this what black stuff expand? on top that you see is a ferromanganese crust that coats the rock. So first you have the basalt, and then you get this ferromanganese crust that starts growing. And then the white stuff is some sort of sediment, probably from the reef. It's so light. Oh, and there's something in the little oh. cave. Oh, right a there. little red... Uh, Crinoid. Sea spider? Well, it's yeah, probably a shrimp. shrimp. Uh, long legs. It has long legs, yeah. yeah. long legs. Yeah, that's oh, a nomadic okay, okay. sinus shrimp, or the long-legged shrimp. <laughs> wow. That is an appropriate name. Yeah, it's got real long legs. I don't think I've seen one of these. Yeah. Direction to waypoint uh, two is one five zero. Okay. Uh, do you want porch lights, maybe? I've got uh, nice play iris. So it's just in a dark spot. There he comes out in the light. <laughs> yeah, we'll see a lot of these shrimps along our dive. All right. They seem to occur almost everywhere we look. Does that mean move on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll see another one. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fun, uh, fun feature, but yeah. Fun Just feature. that in there. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty common. Which way would the current be pushing you? I can, I'll go dead here and see. Oh, it's kind of hard to see on there. Yeah, without, without Doppler, it's tough. It's another coral up there. This, this thing? Yeah. Yeah, it's Is that not a crinoid? Crinoid. The, yeah. the current's not too bad right there. Okay. So mm. It might be like maybe where there's, you know, like a nose sticking out. It might kind of rip around the nose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stalked crinoid. And ducks and ducks. It's definitely a stocked crinoid. Yeah, Steve's identified it as endoxacrinus, I think, is how you pronounce that. <laughs> yep. That's, that's pretty close. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah, these ones are kind of interesting, um, stocked crinoids, because they don't actually root Ooh. themselves onto the rock. They kind of have these leg structures that hold themselves on, but they're also stocked, so like halfway hmm. between stocked and unstocked. That's up. That's Is there cute. something underneath it? Yeah, that's that's its, it's uh, stock, and it mm -hmm. has little legs called Siri. Looks really yeah. cool. Yeah, the top of it looks kind of crazy, like a rosette or something. Mm -hmm. They're really pretty. Lots of arms. Yeah. Uh, the artichoke crinoid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it seems so delicate. Oops. Get out there. Oh. Wow. Yeah, 
Yeah, you can see those legs. Yep, it's holding on. But if it wanted to, it could let go and move on to a different location. How much control would it have over which location it then landed on? Um, it can undulate its arms oh. to swim. But the current will most likely push it to wherever it's going. Their, their ability to swim is fun and interesting, but not extremely efficient. <laughs> All right. Carrying on. All yeah. right. Would it be possible to collect one of these or to attempt? Uh, that looks like it's too far in that crack. Yeah. I don't see Ooh. anything. It looks loose. Sponge. Yeah. So this is a different sponge, also in the family Euplectility. As we get closer, I think it's a Regadrella. You can zoom in, Dave. That's cool. And this one looks like it has some sort of anemone or something living in the tissue of the sponge. So those are those brighter white spots. Um, the little tiny spots? Yeah, you see like how along the body of the sponge mm -hmm. there are these those bright white spots. Those are all different anemones? Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's really cool. They're so tiny. They're very tiny. Kind of looks like Christmas tree with lights. <laughs> kind of. Or a Hanukkah bush. <laughs> oh, and I think there's a shrimp in there, too. I saw it near the base. Ah, uh, a great wedding gift. <laughs> yep, there's two of them in there. <laughs> All right. Give me a little more leash, Jake. I'd come down a little bit more. There's a fish in the Argus view. Oh. Are you done with this guy? Yeah, I'm yep. done with this guy. Very nice. There's a yellow coral in the upper left, if you zoom out. Oh, and there's a mega moth tunicate yeah, down, the right yeah. Right. All right, you can come up a little bit. Can you, can we come more together here? <laughs> Coming up. Do you want me to move? Um, well, are we staying local here, or put it carrying on? Put in our first move, one five zero. That's what. Yeah, we can do yeah. a move one five zero. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we could spend all day exploring this feature, but. Bridge now. Can we make our first move, twenty meters, one five zero? Thanks. For those of you asking about the size of the things yep, you nice. see on camera, um, take a look at our scaling lasers. You'll see two green dots. They are 10 centimeters apart. So by looking at them, it'll hopefully give you a better idea of what the size of the creatures are that we're looking at. Oh, are we going to grab a rock? Or what was the deal with that? Well, if you see one that looks loose. Yeah. Are we going angular or are we going globular? Ooh, sea star. Rounded, sea because star the star. rocks probably won't be suitable for amber. A little right. fat one. Yeah. 
Anything around here up here? We'll um, yeah. <laughs> what about like Jake. that or something? Oh. <laughs> Every time I put it up. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> so we have a move on, but it. So that sea star is a hymenaster, also known as the slime star. <laughs> That's loose. It's got a nice shape. Yeah. Richard? One of uh, either of those. All right. You want to get your jaw out there? You got uh, uh, blue, blue, draw. blue button on? Uh, craft power, blue button. Also, this one down there, valve, if that doesn't valve. work. Because those right. actually look pretty big. So you could do this one down here. I don't okay. know if that's possible because it looks like it might be smaller. It's here. Down there. Yeah. yeah. It looks loose too. Yeah. Yeah. And free of sediment. Yeah. Hey, let me Relatively. land here before right. you go in. Might have tumbled. Stow it. We'll just take it anyways. Yeah. I'll start crinoid on that one anyway. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, there it is. Camera is really slow. All right, Jake. Let's All see right. if you can get it. Looks pretty in place potentially. It's our favorite game. Will it move? <laughs> Uh, it will oh not. No. I don't think so, but yeah. I'll give one more. Wiggle. Yeah. No, that's, no, that's, that's, that's there. there. <laughs> <laughs> that's staying there. A few more a million lot. years, we yeah. can come back and try again. <laughs> <laughs> Mark the location. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think we could move on. Yeah. Is this, what is this something? That's uh. Hmm. Well, it's definitely a something. <laughs> <laughs> Might be an anemone. All right. Some filaments. It looks like a crinoid plus something. Maybe a sponge or something. I don't see where we're looking. Oh, at oh the right right base of the rock. Yeah, right yeah, there at the base. Can zoom in? Oh, it's a sponge. That's a sponge? Yeah, they're both sponges. Two different ones? They're two different sponges. Why is there sticks coming out of one? Those are spicules. Spicules. Those are very, very long spicules. Yes, wouldn't, they are. Wouldn't want to touch those. <laughs> yeah, they would just stab you right in the <laughs> finger. <laughs> they're just shards of glass, basically. You guys don't stab yourself with shards of glass with your fingers all the time? <laughs> nope. I mean... <laughs> Not my general <laughs> daily routine, <laughs> but is there something in one Brittle of those too? Yeah, somebody, somebody's yeah. making a home down in there. Oh, oh. So, some kind of a star, a brittle star. So these are glass sponges, then? Yes, they are. And there's a little orange guy inside. Yeah. So the top one is a euplectelid, uh, similar to the one we were looking at before. Maybe a regadrella. It's not doing so well. It's no. lost the top half. But this lower one is uh, interesting. I'm, it could be in the family Rosellidae, but uh, I'm not sure. Something like this could be of interest for sampling, but this is a very small one, and I believe we're still within the monument boundaries. Yeah. So sure um, we, got 10. we can collect if we see more of this. But this one will get a pass for now. Yeah. All right, moving on. Yep. 
Moving on. Did we put a step in or? Yes, we okay. just moved 20 meters, but I think we can make another move. I want to secure the craft off. Uh, are we still looking for rocks though? Now we can keep moving. Yeah, we can keep moving. All right. And power. Look at that rock. That's a, that's a gravel rock. <laughs> <laughs> Bridge nav. <laughs> can we do another 20 meter move? Right. 150. 41K. Doing all right there, Jake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's another little sponge on the rock. That might be a Dictialis, so related to the Regadrella. So you got good currents around here. I don't know yeah, if it could be uh, tidal, if you're not feeling much now. a lot for the first half hour mm -hmm. life. Megan someone is wondering about um, glass sponges are they brittle would they break easily some yes some no so uh, there are a few families of glass sponges that are extremely brittle and they'll shatter if you try to pack, pick them up so it's very difficult to sample some of those but those euplectelid sponges that we were looking at are actually pretty squishy uh, and that all has to do with the dictyonal framework, which is the way all of those spicules, those glass pieces inside the sponge, or make up the sponge skeleton, um, come together. So some of them are quite spongy and soft, and others are quite hard and rigid. And what are the spicules for exactly? The spicules are basically the sponge's skeleton. And every sponge species has its own unique uh, arrangement of these different spicules. So that is what sponge taxonomists use to identify sponges, which means that we can only, we could take a small piece of a sponge and it can be identified to species because all that taxonomist needs is to find each one of the spicule types in order to make that identification. Steve saw a yellow-brown crinoid, Gilacrinus species. Yep, that's a Gilacrinus. Steve's on it today. Five on it. Some tracks. Yeah, sediment tracks. about this rock? <laughs> Ever hopeful. <laughs> you gonna go for it? Yeah. You're in good position. Yeah. Oh, there's something it? living on top of it. I think. Uh, oh. We're almost done. Okay. I oh. just yeah. want to know if I should we'll, we'll have to zoom and see what's on it. We don't want to sample a whole organism if we're not sure what it is or if we don't know that there's more than 10 of them. In, That's a stalk crinoid, like the many others that we've oh, seen. Yeah. We've definitely seen more than 10 of these already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I don't well, think that's moving. Yeah. It's no. Looks like it's cemented, but... You want to try it or what are we doing? If you got time. It looks kind of big. You ready, Jake? Yep. Well, it's, it's yeah, thing. it's a foot across or something. Yeah. Blue button's on. Ready for valve? Ready for valve. Mm. 
Yeah, that's about this big. Yeah. Got that look. <laughs> yeah, no. No, no way. No. <laughs> okay. All right. It's up, up and away. That crinoid, crinoid looks out. Mm -hmm. Found a good home. Yeah. These old dusty rocks don't appeal, right? No. Yeah, Coralie doesn't like dusty rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's another one. Yeah. A lot of diver biodiversity wow. down here. Quite a steep feature. Mm -hmm. There's a little fish that just flew by on Argus Cam. A what? Some kind of fish. Oh, I missed it. It was very quick. Well, if they're too quick, I can't ID them. <laughs> it's like, ooh, what was that? Yeah, they're fast. Another cup coral on the left. There's another unbranched, unbranched primnoid. Ready to turn on the porch lights there, Dave? Sure. Got lots of light right now, but... Is that, is that better or worse? Uh, better. It's more even. Right. Let's go with that for a while. Cup coral there. It sure is. Yeah. Let's zoom in. Yeah, let's do a zoom on that. Quite a few cup corals already. Yeah. <laughs> do they all tend to be orange pink? Yeah, a lot of them tend to be this orangey pink color. I think it's the only color I've seen. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. Yep, Moving good on. Too. So many nooks and crannies. Coming up, Jake. Coming up. Wow. Is this pretty much vertical? It's like a wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at the Argus <laughs> screen. It's just like a Ooh, flat look at that. face. That looks like a bamboo coral. Can we get a zoom on that? Yeah. Zoom in. Lots of branches. Yeah. Wow. And what's at the bottom? Oh, no, it's a primnoid. Is this one of those three? No. Huh. That's a weird, that's kind of weird. Does it all seem like they're branching from the kind of the same, similar Yeah, there's area. like one location where they're all branching mm -hmm. from. Oh. Very cool. This is really weird looking. 
Does Wonder Steve say anything? He's typing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no idea on the ID. A primnoid. It's a primnoid. Uh, wondering if we should s try to snip. I, I'm time. thinking we should snip this. Oh. I agree. Oh. Looks a little weird. How do you feel about oh. it? Tough. Uh, <laughs> Odd yeah, let me let me zoom out. Steve said a I snip would be here. nice. Yeah. Uh, okay. You ready, Jake? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> do, it, go. do you want to snip and suck? Yeah, we can snip and suck. Snip and slurp. All right. Snip and slurp. Uh, uh, let me see if I can plant here. Mm. All right. Maybe. Somehow, some way. <laughs> Maybe you can get one of your skids over off to the right. Uh, I'm going to see if I can just lay this arm right up against there. Okay. Yeah, Steve is saying and it looks like the unbranched colony we saw below. Yeah, with that three-way. Um, yeah, the, yeah, the three whirl polyp arrangement, so but then it's like branching like crazy after a certain distance. That's because some of the polyps were retracting up actus, uh, axis, he's guessing maybe uh, Calyptophora. Calyptrophora. Calyptrophora? Yeah. If you I don't know. Guess. Usually yeah. Calyptrophora doesn't branch exactly like that, like because it's, it's a little too scrambly. Steve concurs with the snip and slurp. So it would just be like a piece towards the yeah outer end of it. The yeah. End. yeah, and if we can get one of the branch points, that'd be good. Okay. Oh, can you come down, Jake? That's what's going on. Yeah. You get yanked around too much. I was trying to be mindful of the, you know, steep cliff. Yeah. But we're not moving, right? Are we moving? Okay. Could we try another zoom? I decided that we didn't need to move. This is too steep. Jar one, is that the scene? Jar one data? Yep. Yes, please, jar one. Could we get a zoom on the... Hmm. A little hard to see from this angle. Yeah, I guess one of the... That looks pretty good. That one? That your one? I'm gonna get the... I think so. It's really oh. whited out, isn't I, it? Yeah. It's right next to the flesh, so it's definitely yeah. a good jar. I think it's one. I think I got it. Oh, beautiful. Oh, nice. Nice job. Perfect. Absolutely legendary. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Where is that? Oh, there's the slurp. It's a pretty much everyday legendary now, right? <laughs> you want to zoom in? Yeah. Yeah. If we zoom can see which way the age. polyps are closing, that could be of interest. Looks are going down. Do you want me to bring it up to the camera so you can get a yeah, close Yeah, yeah, if okay. we could see. Because the way the polyps close kind of helps us ID if they close downwards or upwards. But it looks like they're closing downwards. Cool. 
Thanks. All right. This is sample 27? 28. 28. Mm -hmm. All right. In there? I think so. I think we're slurping. All right. Are we seeing slurpage? I'm not. Uh, Doesn't look like it. Hang on. Let me cycle it. Here, let me look down on the bubble too. Make sure I'm in there. Oh, there it goes. I mean, yeah, it looks like All it's right. slurping. Yeah. There it goes. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> okay, just uh, we're going to rotate it just to make sure that was number one. Okay. Got in. So it was number one. Great. Megan, we have some questions about corals coming in. Um, are all corals carnivores? Um, well, shallow water corals, like a lot of people know, um, have uh, symbiotic zooxanthellae. So those zooxanthellae provide food to the coral. So they don't have to feed from the water column, but they can. But in the deep water, there is no light. So we don't have that um, zooxanthellae that are living inside the corals. So all these corals are feeding on uh, particulate matter that they filtered out from the water column. So they're not actively hunting down food items, but they are feeding on stuff that comes um, near or through or by their skeleton. So they're gonna be picking up um, small particles in the water okay, and feeding off. on that. Valve off. Power off. Power off. And another coral question is, after they die, do they harden? And is that why when we think of corals, it's very hard. Is that what we're thinking of? No, no, they don't harden after they die. Um, their skeletons are hard. So mm, okay. a lot of people, they see the, the dead coral uh, in shallow water. And those are scleractinian corals, meaning that they make their skeletons out of aragonite, which is a form of calcium carbonate. Other corals, like the octocorals that we're seeing, uh, can have different types of skeletons. Some have protonaceous skeletons, others have uh, calcium carbonate skeletons. Um, the primnoid that we just picked up has a more protonaceous skeleton, so it's very flexible. Uh, a bunch of guys but over their here. skeleton yeah. would break All down yeah. over time. I'm gonna zoom in, Dave. Thank you. Now, if this is Data Lab. Yeah, so had Data Lab. We got some green lights on Nav G3. It's a weird process to get there, but see if it can do Nav G3 things or Nav G things. Those are the same. Yeah, Doppler's still off. You want Doppler? Or do you want to start the software? Uh, yeah, let me bring up the software first. Oh, I don't have it's going. my mouse control to this computer. The 
Doppler beans. All right. Data Lab Nav, could you give me control? Can you give me control of the um, nav computer? Look at all those. They're all grouped together there. Zoom in, Dave. Four, five, six, six seven. seven. Wow. Cool. Probably all cousins or. <laughs> They're definitely, uh, I think, one of the coolest crinoids I've seen. I like all those arms. This one looks a little different, doesn't it? Yeah. That's, uh... Huh. Alright. Bob, do you want to get into a position where I can reset your DVL? Uh, you can go for it. I can just go for it? Alright. I mean, if you got good Doppler block. You got time to zoom uh, on that one? You got yellow, but it's, got yellow. it's probably it's good just, enough. It's all the way out of it. It's just closed. It looks like the arms are kind of closed up. It so also looks like it's got uh, it's pretty steep, sediment so on it. Yeah, that's, it's that's not too happy with it. So it's the same. It's still a stock crinoid. It's just its arms are closed? Yeah, I th that's what I think. I mean, the legs the, at the base of the stock look similar. Because from the one on the right, that one kind of like, yeah. it looks meaner. <laughs> <laughs> its arms are more flared. <laughs> Maybe not so healthy. Strange. We happy? Looks happy. Uh, <coughs> shrimp. Ooh, oh, fish. It's like shrimp. Shrimp. Questionable. <laughs> yep, it's happy. All right. Working out ROV nav there. Any loose rocks on top of this feature? They doesn't all look really heavily sedimented like though. It. Yeah, yep. Yep. Not a good collection point. Data lab now. Things look happy up here. Several more. Yeah. Thank you for all your hard work. They really like it up here. <laughs> Kill the porch light. Porch yeah, light. copy that. We can use an angular rock or two if we come across them. Okay. Before, you know, at certain depths, they're going to be all carbonate. Yeah. We just assumed that at this, that this dive, since it was so shallow, that um, Amber wouldn't be able to use any of these rocks. But we can try and look for an angel yeah, one. Right. one. What's yeah. our plan of attack here? Keep an eye out for a good candidate. 115. Moving on. Oh, oh 150. 150. Yep, we can move on. Bridge now. Can we make a 20 meter move? 150. down there too. Oh, there's a, another one of those long. Oh, there's little little shrimp. Oh, wow. Redder she than red. Big one. Yeah. Very red. Ooh, that's a nice sponge. That's a sponge? Down down well, there. Down there. Oh. It's a really long stalk. Oh, yeah, I long thought that was stock. a crinoid. <laughs> that is a crinoid. <laughs> <laughs> I was excited about the sponge. Okay. <laughs> Do you want the sponge? Or you want the crinoid? Well, I mean 
both. Sponge. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll start at the sponge. Then. Yeah. Our Looks Gabby's going to start at the sponge. Good drum she stick. She is taking over. Kettle drum. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've seen sponges. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, <laughs> such freedom. <laughs> it looks like a coral of some sort. Yeah. You see that coral under the rock, Megan? Yeah. For those of you listening, just be aware that we are attempting a watch change, so you might hear some radio silence, but give us a few minutes and we'll be back on. Hi. So one of our scientists is short, Kevin Conrad, is uh, sharing one of the scientific questions that uh, Amber Cerevalo, who's getting ready to come on watch, and he are looking at to uh, answer is, why do Kingman and Palmyra have large, long-lived reef-building communities while similar aged geos in the region do not? This could be related to uh, later reactivation of certain volcanic structures. So you get some formation of uh, seamounts from volcanic activity. It then goes to sleep, but then gets reactivated later, perhaps. And Amber will be on watch in a few minutes. Good. All right, so I'm Petruncio turning over to Megan Lubetkin here for the 12 to 4. It should be a great watch.
Data, do you have what you need of this sponge? One thing I found that sometimes works is if you go to Can you push a little past video? Can you push a little past? Yeah, perfect. Exactly what I was thinking. Okay, go wide, video. Okay, uh, there's a little octocoral. I'll try and keep off to this side. I think this sort of terrain is what porch light is the best at because when you do this, everything gets so dark under those rocks, but it's so beautiful now. It's very beautiful. Look at all this beauty. I think this might be a good way to approach without affecting that sponge. Okay, video, let's get a zoom. Oh, there's like an urchin or something there. Yeah. I'm starting to deliver things in song too. I've been on watch with Kylie for like a week and a half. <laughs> <laughs> it's catching, it's contagious. That's allowed. <laughs> Ooh, an urchin or a sponge? That's a sponge? It looks like a very spiny sponge. Oh yeah. Do you it think does. those are its like little roots? I think it's spicules. Wow. Nice job, video. Oh, sorry, I got a little bit. So I actually think we're gonna. Is the boat moving? Not currently. Oh, okay, awesome. Then we're fine. Okay, try again, video. I'm sorry. Data, do you have what you need now? Uh, yes. Okay, you can go wide video. You can still see the, you see the Argus view. Oh, let's get all of these things. They look so beautiful. Yeah, I can see it. It's, it's exciting looking. I love it when these sponges stick off the cliff out into the abyss. It's so dramatic. Oh, 4K. Wow. Did you yeah. want a clip of something? Um, I was just trying to t take a look and see how we were angled towards it. Um, yeah, it got it got angled up just a little bit. Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, I mean, if if it's, I guess we're not moving. So if we can get a a nice uh, view on all of those, that could be a nice. Uh, so I don't know. Let me see if I can get all of them. They're funny. Like one's under a rock, one's another one's under a rock, and one's sticking way out. So or or if we just want to pick we, one and, and yeah. center up on it, that let works too. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let's see. Oh, you got this. Oh yeah. Oops. Whoop de doo. Oh. 
Um, is that, that might be a tug from Argus. I'm coming down. Okay. It looks like everything's super stable, so feel free to. I had come up, I was like 10 okay. meters above whatever. Yeah, the, I think, yeah, the you're gonna be slope fine. is there, yeah. yeah you're so gonna, I, Raj. Yeah. You're gonna be fine here. Just everything's super stable right now. I should check the weather before I say things like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't, but yeah, it is. It's it's very friendly looking. I'm also kind of waiting for stuff to settle a little bit here because uh, I stirred it all up. Okay, so we can look at all of the things at once or we can zoom in on one. Um, Here's all yeah, the things. I think I think zooming in on one will probably be a bit okay. more beautiful. I think the sponge is the most charis charismatic. I agree. Let's okay. do it. Can I get, let's see. Oh, I can do this for myself. 4K? Yeah, you I'm going to. I don't think you have a 4K book. No, I can't do I this can for do it myself. For you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm, it's job security. <laughs> <laughs> can't do this for myself. Come on for Pip. H two one. Oh yeah, my God. there we Ryan, go. Was Beauty. That, was that pretty good? <laughs> yeah. That's great. Awesome. Are, are we doing a four K capture? Um, we are, but okay. once we get a little bit more centered on this sponge. What here. are you looking for? Do you want the whole thing, or do you just want the end? Um, yeah, maybe just the end, or kind of the end looking in. Okay. But um, up to you about what's possible. So yeah, I won't be able to look in probably just because the four K camera goes straight down, and there's no way to like, and this thing points straight out. But I can, tr yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going in. All right. Let, are you good for me to zoom? Uh, yeah, you uh, get your iris a little bit better because right now it's quite hot. I can't actually do that. It's auto. Okay, I will do this. Uh, that didn't help. It made it a little bit better. Oh, that's that better. That's better. It's <laughs> kind of green, but that's a little bit better. Am I good to zoom? Yeah, go for it. Cool. got some interesting shadows on it. Work on that focus. I also don't have a, the only thing I have is zoom. Oh. No! Yeah. Maybe okay. we won't. I'll, I'll pull back a little. Okay. Do you want the lasers off? Yeah, I think so. That's Gosh. really interesting that I didn't realize you didn't have any focus. Well, it's funny because my Xbox controller says I have zoom, iris, and focus, but the <laughs> only one that works is zoom. And I was okay. told that the others are set on auto. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But I didn't want to give you too much power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, video wants it simple for us back here. Um, so I can probably get a little bit around the front here. Okay. See inside, but not a lot inside. This looks like maybe the closest we can get and still focus. Yeah, th I think that maybe we, we don't need to, to go for a blast, but... It's very sparkly. It's, it is nice to check out. And the view in the Herc HD is great. Meanwhile. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 because I can actually look up with that. Yeah. <laughs> so watch this. <laughs> nice. Ha-ha. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to drive up at the Herc HD again. Yep. That's cool. Okay, let's video, let's get a zoom. Oh, wow. Argus view is nice, too. Yeah. Oh, wow. Herc looks like it's looking at a, a big flower. I know it does. I'm like talking into a microphone. Sweet flower. <laughs> yeah. Like Horton hears a who. <laughs> exactly. I don't know why I'm quite uh, bouncy. Um, can you come down a little? Me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you got it. <clears throat> it is pretty cool to look in the end of these. Okay, go for Zoom. Like has a couple of amphipods in there. Maybe. Was it the shadow? <laughs> oh, no, sorry. I'm red. just trying different things with the lighting Ooh, that configuration. Looks great. That's great. Yep. It's high drama there. Nice. Yeah, I think you're right. There, there's an amphipod there. Yeah. The, that little red speck in the inside. Okie dokie. Let's go wide. I'm gonna come up. Okay. Just a wee bit. Yeah, sure. 
Okay, how do we feel about this area? I think we're good. I think we can keep keep moving up whenever you're ready. Okay, yeah, let's keep the move short. Yeah. It seems really steep. Yeah, it's really, really steep. In fact, um, we're not going to get Doppler all the time because of how steep it is, so the vehicles yeah, are going to be pretty spotty. Fine. Just a heads up. It looks like the Sonar 9 struggles with some of the bathymetry, too. Yeah. Very okay, nice. I'm going to be coming up a little bit. I'm coming. Hello, Hello Lexi. World. Could we step two zero meters bearing one four zero? Oof, I made a mess. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the 12 to 4 watch. We're happy that you decided to tune in. Oh, did you put that step in already? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's okay. Um, I'm so, uh, Argus, I'm going to start, I'm going to move pretty quick to get out ahead. Okay. In that case, let me come wide on this guy. Yes, please. Raj. Okay. Okay. Oh, we got, we got a pretty decent geometry. The sonar dine is a little bit misleading. Um, and I'm just going to turn to 140 as you go uh, okay. around. 140 is our... 140. 140. Okay. It's our bearing. Great. Huge mess. <laughs> Not much current. Yeah. Good for some things, bad for others. Would now be a good time to begin with introduction for our 12 to 4 watch? I'm okay with it. Me too. That sounds great. All right. Hello, everybody. This is Brandy Jones coming to you from Houston, Texas, serving as your science communication fellow for the 12 to 4 watch. I am excited to be here. Ooh, what are you? C pen, maybe? Ooh, Ooh I think you might be right. Right in time for my introduction, too. <laughs> this, this thing looks amazing. Yeah, it's beautiful. But Go for Zoom. Wow. Oh, how pretty. Okay. Yeah, you can go right in there. Look Dave at that. Dave says that this is a penetulid. So cool. Oh, is that how you say it, Mary? That's how I would say it, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> I could also be very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, Okay, video, you potato, can start to potato. pull out. <laughs> Do you guys want anything specific, like the base of this, or are you good? Uh, I think we're good. Okay. There looks to be something off to the left on some of the rocks. Ooh, oh, yeah, there's another coral. coral okay. up there as well. Go take a look yeah, at that. Black coral? Yeah. Yep. Okay, what I saw oh, on the rocks no. looks like nothing. Oh, I that got a little close. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. Ooh, that's it's a bright, really lovely. Nice. bright color. Loving the color. More deep sea flowers. The last watch said that we had a lot of crinoids. We really do. Go for zoom video. See some nice critters here. Unfortunately, oh, there's crinoids. lots of oh, there's an goo in the water. Oh, sea pen right next to it. Oh, so that's a sea pen. That's not another crinoid. No, uh, so this there one? is, yeah. that one is a coral, and then kind of behind the crinoid is a sea pen. Oh, I ah. see it, just a little guy. It's, yeah, it's kind okay. of faint. I should probably get moving just to make sure I know a little bit more about this train. Sure. <laughs> um, do you guys have what you need here? I'm sorry, it got a little bit murky. I'll try and be more careful in the future. Yeah, I think we're good here. Thank you. Okay. Um, right now, we're going upslope, but sort of laterally, sort of traversing at an angle. Is okay. that a safe approach for? Seems fine. Vehicles? I feel feel pretty okay about it. Okay. Um, that is so, so far. Pretty. <laughs> they really Ooh, are. That is beautiful. Yeah. I think it's cool to let each move run out when we're dealing, because this is like fully vertical. Yeah. What size moves are you calling in? Uh, 20 meters, and then, okay. yeah, just this one is, is now, we're just holding position. Okay. So cool. we'll, we'll pause. Oh, there, and there's good stuff to look at here. It's like, mm. why rush? 
There really is. Even the rocks here are really pretty. Well, oh. pretty in my terms. Okay. I think they're pretty. <laughs> I'm on I your think team. We're a little biased. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go for Zoom video. I was looking at the yellow thing. Yeah. Yeah, there you oh, go. Yeah. Is that a. Coral scientists like yellow corals a lot. <laughs> it's a thing I've I learned. I can't tell. It might be. There's a brittle star wrapped around it. I think you're right, Amber. Those might Did be I a actually name. maybe I, get a, I can't get tell. A coral nice. Thing? Yeah, it is zoanthid covered yes. plexorid. It's like, okay, go uh, on. Steve is saying in the chat. <laughs> yeah. And a bunch nice. of crinoids there. That looks like a, maybe a black coral off to the left. Hey to my A leaf people. Thank you for tuning in. <coughs> Gabby, oh, I do don't you, know. Do you what? want um, Herc Zeus there again? Um, I'm okay. okay I, think, I think it's good practice to have something weird there. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> something green. <laughs> ah, are we good to continue introductions, or do we want Yeah, to yeah. Unless you guys have something. Well, I was going to look at this other zoanthid covered maybe thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah go for it. <laughs> go, for the, uh, go for the Zoom. Go nice for Zoom. description there. Megan and I are both getting super up close and personal with a telestrator, as though that that'll make it. We're doing a mechanical zoom. <laughs> I do that too with the big screen, and I can't get nearly as close <laughs> as you do. Ah, uh, very bouncy. To me, that looks different than the other. Uh, okay. Steve is saying it might be an acanthogorgia. Oh, your Z bias is zero. It sure is. That may oh, I did that to come up. It? Oh, Raj, yeah. Because um, there was a while there where I had to go up fast. Thank you. Nice. Got you, girl. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll take this moment where I don't see any biology. <laughs> Just for a second. I see biology <laughs> there again <laughs> to introduce myself. I was Hello, about to everyone. blame it on Argus. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that coming. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> 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 Okay, go for Zoom. <laughs> We're back. Uh, oh, uh, my gosh. Zooming in on the Acanthogorgia. Oh, my nice. Name is oh, there's a little Zerbal tiny little science. swimming oh, critter yeah. there. Mm. Oh, okay. oh. oh, yeah. Hello, oh, friend. Oh, my gosh. It's kind of blue inside. A little crinoid here, maybe? Oh, or a Brazilian sea star? I don't know uh, what that is. It's a crinoid. Yeah. Yeah, we can see that little... Oh, oh, oh look at his roots. Those are amazing. I was really listening earlier, oh watching the gosh. dive, and Megan, the other Megan, okay, go <laughs> Mab, was talking about these carinoids. Oh, so pretty. Um, oh. Pilots, are we ready to move up slope a bit? Sure thing, if science is. Yep, we can keep moving. Okay, let's Great. do it. Great zooms. Bridge, now. Nah. Mahalo, Veronica. I think we're going to be diving until 12 midnight, correct? That's right. We'll be on deck then, is the... Could we plan. step two zero meters bearing one four zero? But there will be more dives, so stay tuned. All right, I think I managed to get an introduction in. You want to go, Megan? <laughs> sure. Um, my name is Megan Lubetkin, and I am the watch lead for the 12 to 4. Very excited to be here. Hello, my name is Mary Dury, and I am the data logger. Ooh, and we've got a, a Oh, yeah, sponge. look at that. Oh, yeah. Go for Zoom. Mm. There's mm. something in 4K, too. Oh, and a Ridigorgia in 4K. Ooh. Ah, oh, nice. Oh. I didn't even realize the 4K camera was down there. Yeah, Gabby's flying with it. I'm flying <laughs> off of two cameras. No, one of them is just luck. <laughs> Here we can see if we can get a look down the. Yeah, I think he has a an associate inside. I love that we go call wide them associates. Me too. I know. I think it's really funny. I think of like business associates. Yeah, I, there are little sticks and there yeah, are little briefcases. Trimmings. Yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. I've never thought of that. <laughs> really, but it makes so much sense. Yeah. <laughs> now I will never unsee it. Let me consult with my associate. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, in 4K you can see down the oh, wow. down the sponge Ooh. pretty well. Ooh. Should we do a quick zoom? 
Yeah, do it. I'll line it up on the 4K. Nice. Go for it. Here we go. Oh, wow. Oh, it almost, is it like a membrane at the top? Oh. Um, I think it's just wow. their spicules. It's a glass sponge and it's just kind of cool. them connecting. I'm not sure what that is in there, but it's definitely something. Yeah. Would it be some kind of amphipod? I don't know, maybe. What are common associates inside of these? We can look at it in the HD as well, which might just look a little different. Yep. How do you feel? Do you want me to scoot? No. Okay. I think we're okay. I'll just come up a little bit. Yep. Try not to affect you. I'll try not to be so quick to blame Argus. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, go for Zoom. Oh, that's great. Okay, I think I need to be angled nice. down more to see the associates here. Go wide. Looks like there's a few of them. I can see one on the... For some reason, maybe it's just like the training of my eye right now. I'm like preferring the the Zeus for looking at things. I'm like more, just more used to looking at the Zeus. Okay, go for Zoom. I think I'm the same way, Gabby. Me the too. 4K looks a little bit odd to me. It and does. It's hard to look at sometimes. I wonder if it focuses on all the like marine snow. Like it's got too Yeah, it struggles much. a little. The auto zoom struggles a little bit. And you really very much can't be hey, like Ryan on the right. zoom. Hey, Gabby. Yeah. It's just What's up? Angle. Maybe let's get going. Okay. Go wide. Um, I'll continue the introductions here. Yeah, um, let's get going. My name yep. is Nia Beckler. I gotcha. I'm sitting nav. I'm from Portland, Oregon. You can come up as fast as you want. Awesome. I'm excited to be here with my associates looking at these associates. <laughs> <laughs> we are all little amphipods <laughs> inside of a sponge. It's the Vanar sponge. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Looks like we're getting towards the top. But I thought we were all the little pillow basalts. <laughs> yeah, our step is petering out. Uh, do you want to keep cruising or? No, nope, we can just wait here for a second. Okay. We'll just get, there we go. Get some space. Raj, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, a bunch of crinoids. Nice. And one very much Ooh. not crinoid. Look the and pink. it looks like the two. two different types of black coral, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if I've ever seen them that quite bubblegummy pink. And now that is pretty. You okay if we yeah. stop here and look at these? Yeah, I, I'm going to tilt up and just kind of look out ahead. Yeah, sure. I, but yeah, I think I'm I, cool. It looks like I'm a pretty gentle slope on uh, Mesotech. Raj, I, I'm just going to... Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. I think it's a good dynamic if, like, I try and get as much out of the zoom as I can, and you tell me when it's time to go. Yeah, Raj. If you're comfortable with that. I think that worked well, yeah. Nice. Wow, so pretty. All the polyps mm. on one side of the branches. And there's some brittle stars. Brittle stars. Go for zoom. Oh, wow. Nice. There's just a lot of good stuff in here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful job, Ryan. Thank you. Is there any desire to step the ship back for a little, so we can spend some more time here? I think that we're good to keep Keep moving along. Raj. Yeah, I think okay. Argus is kind of settled yeah. out behind the ship too. Okay. Because uh. I'm I'm full down. And okay. I'm still kind of okay. losing you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Here's a shrimp. Mm -hmm. A lot of crinoids. Oh, wow. oh, 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 o
Aridigorgia. Ooh. And what wow. is this? Oh, that's that's a beautiful spot. Is that a giant Big sponge. Oh. And it's got all different Ooh, types of stars on it. Is that a <laughs> cookie star? Maybe. It's gone out of view just Where's, a little bit. Where are the stars? The cookies uh, are? They're on that big sponge okay. up higher up. Top top How left. tall is that thing? Yeah. Okay, well, here's the whole. I'll try and get you guys an overview. Here. Four K. There's multiple sponges in this area. Nice. If we can get um, a zoom on the, the tall sponge just coming into view on the left. Okay. Wow, that it looks That would be great. Interesting. Wow, he's so tall. There's just so much beautiful life here. Would you like lasers on? To get a sense of how tall he is? Oh, it keeps going. <laughs> yeah. oh my Science, goodness. do you want lasers? Wow. Uh, yes, please. Yes. And what are we looking at here? Some type of glass sponge with with a lot of brittle stars. Go for zoom video. Things. A very tall. You can just push in sponge. till yeah. We can All just look in. at the middle of it. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. I think Steve is saying Walteria. Yep. It's a conglomerate. Walteria, probably. Oh my gosh. Lemon G. Oh, it does oh. have a cookie star in it. Wow, so many associates. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big operation here. Yeah, conglomerate. <laughs> <laughs> a conference. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then mm, Steve says a known predator star on the far right side. A predator star? I just called it that because really I don't nice want to say the Ryan. name of it. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. And like Go good. Derek. stood on the zoom out too. Yeah, that was Gone good timing. Yeah. Oh, so that's the name star. for the cookie store. Beautiful. So we can also do a little more drama if we come at it and have the black in the background too. That sounds great. Let's try it. We're all about all about the drama. <laughs> are we the drama? <laughs> I think we are the drama. <laughs> We're certainly the drama. <laughs> I like the drama to be on the video screen though. Yeah. Like, yes. In an, I in think a that's nice where way. it belongs. Yeah. Leave it in the van. Yeah, totally. The, um, the oh, last wow. video I worked with taught me that this is like the money shot, like when you're facing off into the abyss. Definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll agree to that. It's, even the Ritagorgia looks amazing. It really does. Yeah. And then the second one of these. And it gives you a sense of the slope here, which yeah. is really cool. I think there's also some black coral colonies, Steve is saying, out in the back, I think. Wow. Okay, is that something we want to look at as well? Uh, yes, yes, please. This is gorgeous. Oh, really nice video oh, he's and moving. flying. I love brittle stars. <laughs> oh. Wow. I just love how mobile they are. Yeah. They go so fast when they want to make a run for it. <laughs> <laughs> and you see them sometimes okay, just I'm like gonna reaching float out and up past it and yeah. eating them. I love that. They're brutal. That okay. Is, that is definitely the money shot. And you can go shot. wide video. Um, so you wanted to look at some black corals here? Yeah, yes. in the back. And they're in the background more. Yeah. Like, so Probably sort of where we it. cruised up here in the first place? Yes. Okay. What a nice spot. Yeah, there's actually a good number of things over here. Can I bother <laughs> All right, where are these colonies? I think it's still off to the right. Ah, okay. So what do you think is in the middle of the screen right now? That's a coral, um, right? Or, oh, is that a, um, is it Metallogorgia? Off okay, to the left, this might be a telestrator left. moment. Yeah. Okay. You want to show me which black corals you're looking at? I think um, this one. Oh, there maybe. This this is an No, it was uh, yeah. past it. We yeah. So off to the right a little bit. Maybe, but that may have been it. This it looks like a crinoid. I was thinking of that a sponge. So give this me in reference to the Iridogorgia here. Okay, so that's a that's that another like that sponge. That might be a sponge, but yeah, yeah I think also over there with that heterogeneous. It's possible that 
one of this over here might yes, be. Yes, that does look like a black coral. A black coral. Um, okay. And I think there was maybe there, one further in behind the background. it. Yeah, like yeah. over in the shadow over there. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. And a little sponge over there too. Yep. Yes. These these sponges down this one just looks like smaller versions of what yeah, we just totally. Yeah, totally. We got a couple of these. Oh wow. Oh yeah, there's like a very wispy sponge yes. over there. The yes. I might need to approach this a different way. One sec. We'll set up again. Such so beautiful. wispy one right near the uh, where the lasers were just now. Uh, right here, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. We can take a look at that, and also maybe the black coral that just came out of out of view. Okay. To start. But yeah, we might want to look at a few other things around here. Um. Yes, Coralie also would like to get some loose rocks in the area if we find any. I think there's some actually that might work over here. Great. Okay, I'm going to start, in case looking at the black coral stirs some stuff up, I'm going to look at the wispy one. Um, and since we are sitting here for a minute, um, I'm just going to change my heading to try to get a good Argus shot of Herc. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for tuning okay, in. Okay, go for Zoom. We're checking out some deep sea corals oh. and volcanic Is that rocks. a Pernod, I think? Looks like. Hmm, go on. Hmm. Okay, go for Zoom. I'm afraid to get in there and like stir up some sediment. Nice, that's a great shot right there. Yeah, that might be a from know it. I can't quite tell, but. Oh, and there's little Maybe going a little tighter? I'm not there. sure I can hold it. I'm all the way in. Okay. I got some captures if you okay. need to go out. Wide. Yeah, I guess I should have known that, Ryan, just by the right. That was uh, a calyptrophora. Calyptrophora. I'm glad that you're saying these names, Mary, <laughs> because you say them much differently than I would. Okay, How would so you say that one? Do you think just, that this a um, is a black em coral emphasis. here? Like, uh, um, straight the lasers? No, uh, yeah, to the left of the lasers. Like here? Yes, that guy. I think so. Yeah. Okay, we let's go, go for zoom. zoom. It's one of the few species with down polyps, according Ooh. to Steve. Yes. Nice. Just such a cool spot. Great view. Oh, that's perfect. Maybe we can zoom out slowly and just see what's right below. Okay, go for it, Ryan. That looks like a type of chrysogorgid. Yep. Um, and a little sponge. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy Horowitz says to need to see the relative position of the pinules to be able to ID that one. Okay. Do we need to do that? Um, yeah, let's let's try to do that. Um, which one, the the Dr. Seuss one, like the one on the stock, or the black coral? I thought he was talking about the black coral, yeah, but I think it's the black coral. Yeah, so maybe we could get on the other side of okay. it, just as you're doing now. All right, it is a metallogorgia. I really love metallogorgias, but I I guess they're easy to yeah, love. Yeah, they're cool. That's the stocked one, right? Yeah. Yes. They're so, so cool to check out. They're like a little bit of a go dog go tree. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> like everyone's having a party, a big dog party, uh, like up in the tree. I don't oh. know. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go for Zoom. I guess I'm like kind of on a Dr. Seuss kick here. <laughs> this is a very Dr. Seuss spot. Lots of yeah. truffle trees. Oh wow, look at the Argus view. And I, I think cool. for those of us that are Ooh. not like biologists looking at some of these things all the time, it, it, I mean, there's no other way to look at it than Dr. Seuss. <laughs> yeah. 
What are those attacks? Is this what you guys are looking for with the black coral? I think so, I think so but yeah. let's see if our scientist ashore, Jeremy Horowitz, has anything to add. Some squat lobsters on it. You said squat lobsters? I think those are squat Go lobsters. Go a little wider. I'll get that back in frame. Nice. Um, I'm going to restart yes, our they are squat lobsters. Uh, <laughs> script. Sounds great. Raj. Okay, go for zoom again. Okay, great. You had what you need there? I think we're all set. Okay, go wide. I love those um, super pink squat lobsters. Like they're very, very committed to their uh, coral. Like I've, <laughs> I've sampled those and like just had it be a total snafu, right? Like coral <laughs> everywhere, like, like flying around. I've had to make like several grabs at it. And the, for all the world, the squat lobster will like not abandon its post. They're amazing. Mm. Holding on for dear Ooh, life. very what purple. purple. Victor Gorgia? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's Look, a wow. Is this the Ooh. first Victor Gorgia we've seen? I think we, yes, I watch, think a yeah. previous watch did. Yep. Let's have a zoom. Oh, nice, brittle yeah. stars very with it. Pretty. Beautiful. OK, go a little wider. You can try again for the zoom. There. Do you think Do you think Data Lab has a um, radio? They do. Uh, they're in the RTS. Do you want me to? Yeah. Could you? Could somebody help me? Get Go me on. Get me some support. We've definitely been having some uh, data piping problems. Yeah, and I, I bet they're poking things. Mm -hmm. um, do you want me to call them? Yeah, could you? Yeah, sure. What do you? What should I say? Um, if they have a, well, we don't have any data on the um, winch Python uh, command script, um, so maybe they can do that from there. Or maybe they can come up either way. Okay, anything else around here you guys want to check out or shall we proceed? Let's proceed. Okay, um, I'm just going to get the, I'm just going to get Herc out in front and then we Great. can uh, start the ship up. Really nice flying and zooming, Gabby and Ryan. That was great. Yeah. Thank you. I'm adopting the um, 140 heading again. Okay, sounds good. And we have a, a little bit of a wrap. Okay, thank you. Are we going as shallow as 200 meters? Is that correct? I think it'll look a little I better once I start setting the We're going to try to right go direction. as Raj. shallow as that as we can. Okay. Someone on the feed was asking if we're going to get to the photic zone on the dive. Yeah, we're we're gonna try to get to around 200 meters, um, and we'll see how shallow we can get. Um, the, um, hold on. It's just the GUI that behind, isn't working. I well, I was gonna pull this up. It just won't get in front of the other stuff. Yeah, it's not. Um, there's nothing coming in through it. Uh, are we ready to uh, continue up here? Uh, stand by one. Raj. 